Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa barik wa ala alik Antal Qadim Al Qadim Fil Azal Antal Latif Latif Al Azal Al Oh, 
وفي أمرين قصدنا الكون قصد أمركم
Alhamdulillah, this is the first word that we can say when we gather to, for, for such events. Because the thing is, we are remembering someone whom in our time, even by, own, by our own experiences, we cannot actually summarize it in words. Because the thing is, who, who we are talking about, who we are gathering about tonight, is someone who is considered one of the greatest human beings ever uh, in our life, like in our generation. And, uh, and, and we are only fortunate to, to be able to, to have spent a part of our lives knowing and, and, and having to be with him. And, and I know there are some over here, for example, Shibraheem, his family, even Shibraheem have spent much more, much longer time with them because of their time in the Tariqah also. And, uh, and, and, and uh, Al-Fazil also has, has got some meaningful times and, and wonderful time. And I'm quite sure those who have been to Cyprus have also experienced uh, one of a kind of meeting. To, to see Mohana Shirazi in, in Cyprus is like someone who, who has gone to, to, to Makkah to see the, the Kaaba for the first time. Because the, the anticipation, uh, the, uh, the, the, the feeling of, of how it would be like, because so far you've only seen photos and pictures and videos, like how someone has never been to, to Makkah, to the Haram. And then when the bus just drives through by the side of the road, and then suddenly a big mosque structure just came out of the side, and then they saw the main structure. Just seeing the, the, the walls of the mosque already, their hearts are already filled with desire, with longing. And then when they step inside, and then they see the Kaaba, they start crying. 
And that is how some of, some of the people experience when they see Maulana Shikas in Cyprus, especially. And I've seen personally how people have, have dropped to, 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 to his feet and cried at his feet because they did the journey for so long, you know. And, uh, and, 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 and those are the people who, who have, and, and, and including everyone else who has got the little bit of time that, that, that they have spent with Maulana Shikas. Is, is beyond words can describe. And Walana Sheikh Nazim, he was, was an extraordinary human being, even since childhood. Because when he was young, he was known, at that time, Cyprus was still one island. Now Cyprus, we've got the North Cyprus, Turkish side, and then they have the Greek side on the south, and then they have an international, uh, a no, it's like a, a no weapons, it's like yes. a, Huh? Demilitarized uh, zone, something like between the South and North Korea. So we have a South and North Cyprus where they have a delimitarized zone uh, by the UN. So that's just strip of land a little bit. And, and it separates the island now. But last time it used to be one whole island where the Turks and the Greeks they lived together. So Malana Sheikh Nazim, he was born on, the, on what is now the Greek side in Lavranca. Yeah. So he and he used to grow up over there. And, and when he was young, he, he used to go to the maqam of Sayyidatuna Ub Haram. And Ub Haram was one of the female companions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she was very, very close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she, during the time of Sayyidina Uthman, during the time of Sayyidina Uthman, uh, they, uh, they, they had an expedition, a naval expedition, uh, to, and they set sail to Cyprus, and she died there alongside many others as well. And she was one of the first Muslims to 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 go into Cyprus, and then she died there. And he was known to actually go there every day, and then people could see him talking. And he was alone; he was sitting down, and then he was talking to the makam. And then people were asking, "What are you doing? No, you should be going back home. You should be you should be studying." No. I'm here talking to my mother, he said. Uh, so, so he was known to be to be able to speak with uh, with those in the tombs of, of the of the of the holy ones, of the pious ones, the, the sahaba and, and of the awliya. Whenever the Maulana Sheikh Nazim went, there is always an aura about him. There's always um, that, that that expectation, that that um, the anticipation, that the eagerness amongst people. You know, when, when you, you go to, again, like, like you go to Umrah, for example, or Hajj Umrah, your time is really, especially in Mecca, your time is really um, around the prayer. That means it's between your hotel room and the masjid, the hotel room and the masjid there. You don't do anything else except to pray. Your, your concentration, your focus is there. When you're in Cyprus, no matter what you do over there, you might be working the... Uh, the fields they had, they had many uh, plantations. He got his had like orange grove. He's got olive groves. He's got so many others. And then uh, and I also helped to work some some of the lambs over there. Always at lower time, people will gather at his dada, and they will wait for him. And they will wait for him because he will come, and then he will come, and and then there will be it's like a procession. It's like a king moving every time that everywhere that a king moves there's always a procession wherever that Maulana Sheikh Nazim he moves from his house to his dargah he's just next door only it's like the door of his house is there and you just walk a bit the dargah is just over there at the third class door you know but then the procession sometimes to walk over there takes 10 or 15 minutes because everyone is lining up and then asking him asking for for his handshake you know and and then all the way until the whole because the whole time he will give sohbah, he will give a talk, and everyone will listen, and everyone will look, you know, and, and people will take notes. That was how it was. And then Asar, he will tell people, if you have nothing to do, you read Quran, or you do your zikr, or you read Salawat after Asar and Tumabri. And then at night time, after dinner, after dinner, is uh, after, he, he, we will make the adhan for Isha, but then the dinner time, uh, he, he will lengthen it because he usually has guests every night and then the anticipation because he will come out again to the dalga 
in order to pray Isha together, and then they will have zikir together every single night. So over there, the time with Maulana Sheikh Nazim is all about him. It's, it's, your, your focus is all about him. The anticipation is about him. And you see people from all over the world. You, 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 you cannot imagine the, um, you cannot fathom how people from far ends of the world, from some of the most remote places on earth, gather to, 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 to Cyprus, gather to Lefkev in order to be with him, you know. And in all kinds of people, all kinds of personalities, you know, from the top of, of, of society all the way, all the way down, you know, from, from the most intelligent of people to the craziest of people over there, you see. And Maulana Shinazin said, my dadga is an international mental house, IMH. We have an right, IMH. So, so that was how, and, and he treated people well, you know, and, and he treated everyone well for the start. Because my first time over there, and I experienced this, for the first few days, when Maulana saw me, oh, he was greeting and he was smiling. He was, he was so kind and he gave me the attention. And then suddenly he changed. Every time he walked, right, I took his hand, he's not even looking at me. And it happened for weeks when I was there. And then I felt heartbroken. Then someone advised me. You know, that's a test for your ego. The first few days, Maulana is just giving you the attention. But later on, you want to see your heart. How does your heart change? You know, when he's not showing you attention. When he's not showing you love. But he's showing it in a different way in order to train you. So did your heart waver? Did your feeling for him waver? You know, so those are the kind of things that, that he will test you. Sometimes he tests people with cats. Because he's got some cats, and then some of them are really weird cats, right? So you know, especially the black one, uh, that one, that was, he, he had a black cat. No one dares to deal, to deal with that black cat, no one. Absolutely no one. That one is a spy, you know? There's a Maulana's eyes. Because he walks, the way he travails, is like a human being. It's a, it's, a, it's a funny cat. But he loves cats. And there is a Sunnah of the Prophet no, he loves cats. He has so many cats. And, and, and his love resonates everywhere. And, and when he was, and, and he, he was one of, of those Sufis and saints in, in the modern time, in the modern generation, who was, who was given a kind of training in the Sufi order such that you would see only in ancient or medieval times. Because the kind of training that he went through under Shah Abdullah was under Salah was something that you would not find anymore in our time. The, the kind of tests that he went through, the kind of seclusions that he had to go through, the, the travels that he did. And, and one of the key things about making of a murshid, about, 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 about a wali, is that someone, he, he travels a lot and then he he teaches people of, of Islam and the Sufi way. And, and, he, and because of his travel, he, and he walked from Damascus all the way to Turkey, into Iraq, into Jordan, into Lebanon, everywhere he walked. And his name was known. And because of that, he was known. And, and when he was in one of the seclusions, he did, uh, was a special one, because he did it in Baghdad at the Makkah of Sayyidina Abdul Qadir This was in 1955. And this one, the way that he had to go through, he was actually walking around the streets of Damascus, going about his day. And then suddenly one person whom he knew, who was also another follower of Shah Abdullah, who, who, uh, who, who followed him in his masjid, then told him, I have a message from Shah Abdullah Dabistani to you. You have to go to Baghdad, to the Maqam of Shah Abdullah Bahri Jalani, to meet Khalwa. So he said, I did not do anything. I did not turn around. I just, I just uh, hailed a, a truck, you know. I did not look for, for money. I did not look for anything. I just hailed a truck. And then by Allah's will, the driver was also on his way to Baghdad. So he followed that truck all the way to Baghdad. And he said, I dropped everything. I left everything. Even though people say that you should be doing something for your family. He said, I left my family to Allah because I have this impression to go to. Seclusion. So he went to seclusion, the 40 or 50 days over there, 
and he he had a special room because he is also uh, a descendant of Shah Abdullah Qadir Jailani. See, and after that he gave away his cloak. So the story goes, he he had that cloak, a uh, jubba that he used during his seclusion. You know, he wears it, he sleeps with it. It was his mat, it was his pillow. Everything he did during this seclusion, he, he used that. At the end of the seclusion, he gave the cloak to the caretaker of the of the makam, and the caretaker took care of it. And then, and then after one one after another, since 1955, it was passed down to one after another. And then the cloak reached to Pakistan, yeah. um, and uh, at the place of uh, one of the. Uh, the, 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 the Sufi shines over there, and then they kept it in a closet or, or something, or, or they framed it up. In 1992, Maulana Shinazin visited Pakistan, and he visited this place, and then they said that, you know, we had um, this gift that came all the way from Baghdad, from the Makkah of Sayyidina Abdul Jailani, and then it was passed down from one person to another, saying that this was used by a Turkish sheikh. Uh, sheikh Nazim was Turkish, you see? So they said, and, and they said to take care of this jubba because whoever uses it, it can heal you of any sickness. So when they opened it up, Maulana Sheikh Nazim looked at it and he was smiling, he was laughing. Then, then he asked, oh, oh Sheikh, how come you are laughing? Oh, subhanAllah, this is my cloak. So, so I'm surprised to see here so Allah met him with his cloak in Pakistan after over, over three decades, 1955 to 1992. So, and then after that, he gave initiation to the Qadriya and also the Naqshbandiya to, to the Ketika of the Makam over there. And there are so many other stories from miracles of Malana Shirazim, which I don't think I need to say, but I would like to open up to one or two persons who have had experience with Malana Shirazim. Perhaps you'd like to share maybe one or two words, then, then perhaps people can benefit. Well, maybe. Anyway, yeah, I met Shinazim uh, in 1997 when I was in London. Uh, when I arrived in London, I was paying attention to what people said, you know, what people did to find shape. Uh, and I was looking around uh, and asking people, and of course, I met some Salafis and some other things. So eventually, I met uh, Shinazim in 1997. This was 
just about five years time with no address. I don't know where to go. I just sat at the board for like a week, literally a week for whatever that will come. That comes a truck and spoke to me in Turkish. Obviously, I didn't understand. He didn't understand English, so I just said, Shane Azim, left camp. Oh, then he just said, he, he took me on his uh, truck and drove me off at uh, a bus station. <laughs> so I kind of waited there, fell asleep on the bench. I woke up, there was about 7 a.m. I woke up at 10, I still has no transportation, which was an empty space. So I, I figured maybe it's a weekend. I don't know what day it was. So I, I figured it was a weekend. So I, I just walked out from the, the bus terminal, then took another bus from the outside, and then uh, got to another town, and then the, there was this room full of taxi drivers, and then they spoke to me in the field. They said, Shane Nazim, that's it. And they all looked a bit worried. For some reason, the locals there are a bit worried. Shane Nazim doesn't go well. They did not do what they did. So eventually, somebody took me to uh, to Lafka itself, to Shane Nazim's uh, And then it was, imagine I arrived there in, in Cyprus at Fajar time. I only arrived at Asar time. The kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe it was a test for me to be patient and just, I was just going with the flow anyway. So eventually, when I stepped into the compound, she doesn't just finish his muscle training. And then say, Oh, what are you doing here? I said, Well, I came to see you. She said, I want to come from the first day for about two weeks. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of things happened. Uh, interestingly, the mo most memorable part is every night, there is a zikir where you have a big tasket going around the room. And then you will make zikir from, from point to point right until it goes back to shape. And that's a great story. And, then, and the great part is if they have a cup of Turkish coffee and then just sips and then you come out and that Turkish coffee is passed down throughout the whole room and and everybody gets it uh, to taste it. You know, because obviously you are you're not supposed to cup it all down so that the guy next to you can still have it. So that was my experience really. And, and I'm aware, oh yeah, as, as you said earlier, I thought interesting people from German, Chile, all sorts of people. In fact, there are people who went to see Shinazi not knowing they are in the day, they are becoming Muslims. So let's say we are going to be Sufis, they think some maybe cult, you know, putting some weird substance or whatever. But then after a while, after they do Shada, after someone realizes, actually, we have become Muslim. <laughs> right? Okay, and I'm back to London again. So every year, she doesn't go visit London, usually the Ramadan time. So at that time, when he's always when he's there, our energy level is amazing. We can wake up, you know, from early morning, take the, the early morning bus, go to the dining room, have a great pleasure, and everything, and all that, until late morning when you have to, your own time. At the moment he leaves London, it's like decompression. Everyone just feel weak after that. So one of the amazing things I experienced was when we were in Glastonbury. So we went to this old ambulance and old church. And then uh, what Shinazi pointed was to a rock. And even the caretakers of the old ruins in Glastonbury, those heritage areas, don't know where the rock came from. They said, this is the rock that was brought down by the disciple of Jesus into England. The, the people from the heritage in Glastonbury, they didn't know. They were quite surprised by that. And then during that time, uh, if, if you've been to Glastonbury, you don't know about Glastonbury. Glastonbury is quite a spiritual place. So there were times when she has been pointed to certain area or there's a wrecking after the uh, and then all that is very mystical in that area. So one time we were uh, with the Maulud boys from Malaysia, uh, we were with Maulud uh, in a small town hall. There were all sorts of people, Muslim, some Muslim, Muslim, you know, and that's a very, very new age, a lot of you know, colorful people. And after the whole Maulud event happened, 21 people took Shada on the spot. So we cried and cried and cried. So we were waiting for this for a long time. And that was just one of the things I can talk about. The rest is just like, you know. I mean, I'm sure you speak the whole of the there are more interesting stories. Hopefully, that's enough for the Any, any, any? Who's there? Any, any, or maybe not Cyprus, but maybe you've, you've seen him, maybe even in Singapore.
Thank you very much for coming, inshallah. May Allah accept. We we'll see you next Thursday. Salam alaikum.